Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. Mr. Carter. Yes. Join me in a word of prayer, please. Father God, as we join together here this morning, dear Lord, to do the business of the citizens of Alamance County, we implore you for your guidance, and we implore you for your grace and your mercy, and our leadership for our leadership in our county, our, our municipalities, our state, and our nation, dear Lord, and our world. We all know it's going sideways, dear Father, and it needs badly to be fixed. And Father God, we just ask you to be with us today as we go through the deliberations that are before us. We ask you to guide our thoughts, our deeds, our words, and our actions so that they'll be acceptable in your sight. And we ask all of this, dear Lord, in the powerful and holy name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. McKenzie. Yes. Come forward, please. Um, chair, Chairman, I think you're supposed to approve the agenda next. I'm sorry. Approve the agenda. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's why we have excellent legal counsel. Thank you. Can we sit back down? No, you stay right there. Okay. Thank you. We have an agenda. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All right. Motion second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Now it's you. Thank you, sir. Okay. I would like to talk about the Please safety. state your name. My name is Butch McKenzie. And address. 2750 White Swan Drive, Burlington, North Carolina. Thanks, sir. And you have three minutes. Okay. Now, my wife's here and she signed up. I was going to get her three minutes also, correct? You can have three people and talk about the same <laughs> subject and each one gets three minutes is what i read on the That's website three minutes per person, per and, person and if you have mind. three you brought one speaker That's what it says on your website one person to speak for the three it's, it's I'm not aware of that. I don't, I, that's I, what I it says on your it. website. I don't think that's the policy. I think the policy is three minutes per person. It says if you have up to three people talking about the same subject, that it's well, best to have one Well, you're using person. your time to argue okay. the procedural point. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, the Chapter 14 Criminal Law Article 53C, um, Sporting Range Protection Act of 97, says that you cannot prosecute a gun range for noise pollution if the gun range was in existence for three years prior to the effective date of this article, which is 97. All right. This particular gun range, the property was owned by a church from March the 15th to 97 to July 24th of 2013. It was owned by a family trust from July 25th to 2013 to September 22nd, 2021. This gun range, this is according to the tax records, became the owner of this property September the 23rd of 2021. This gun range is not protected by any civil liability or criminal prosecution according to state law. So they can be prosecuted for what they're doing. The Firearms Industry Trade Association, it says, 
If your shooting range has off-range exposures greater than 85 decibels, structural deficiencies exist that require corrective action. Seek help immediately. I have gone over there personally and recorded gunshots of 115 decibels off the gun range on someone else's property. That is 300 times louder than 85 decibels. 115 decibels. I have recorded decibel readings of 92 on my property. That is 70 times greater than what it should be. Here are what some of the neighbors are saying. Sick of the noise, tired of ducking outside my home. Very upset with my dog as a nervous wreck. Sick of the noise, tired of the noise. It's been obnoxious this week. I'm scared to mow my backyard. Hate it. I hear them my mom is two miles away. They have no respect for church hours. Trying to do my taxes and I can't think. They also blow up tannerite, which shakes our homes. The CDC, they say that lead contamination from gun ranges can go into our water supply. They have here, let's see. Lead contamination migrates through the site through weathering effects, stormwater runoff, uh, and through groundwater transport. Storm, stormwater runoff erodes the lead-contained berms and carries lead from the contaminated soil particles into the surrounding environment. I have personally gone over there. There is lead everywhere. It's off the range. It's in trees. I have a neighbor who was out on uh, Jim Barnwell Road. He had two bullets zinged by him. The bullets go over the berm. This is a deadly situation here. They have had um, a design of the gun ranges. Let's see here. Thought I'd have more minutes than this. It says here, the U.S. Department of Energy Office of Health, Safety, and Security. Live fire ranges should be designed to prevent injury to personnel and to prevent property damage outside the range from misdirected or accidental firing. They are shooting bullets onto other people's land. Okay. That is not right. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your comments. You. I wish I had my other three minutes. Mr. Garrison? He had an emergency and couldn't make it. Mr. McKenzie, uh, Martha McKenzie, sorry. I wanted Butch to speak. I needed her three minutes to finish my presentation. I just, I, ca I checked the public comment policy and it says that each person is permitted three minutes. It states that if you have more than three speakers on one topic, topic, it is suggested to designate one person to speak on the topic. It doesn't say that that person gets additional time. And that's my recollection of the procedure as well. Uh, Mrs. McKenzie, we'll be glad to hear from you. I'm not prepared to speak. No. She hasn't gone over my notes with me. Right. Thank you. And we have another speaker, but that speaker is not on topic and therefore our agenda, and therefore will be at the last of the meeting. That's anyone <laughs> down here. I think he is. I just spoke to him earlier today, Scott. So it says it's not on the agenda. My wife did that. Does that count for anybody? <laughs> <laughs> and is I it, know his wife is nowhere near here, so I don't know. Is it regarding a matter that's on our agenda? Yes, sir. Then come forward, please. And I'll make the correction here for you. <laughs> I, I, sir, I can get in, in trouble without your help. I'm not going to volunteer anybody's <laughs> life. <laughs> there you go. My Thank name you. is uh, Edwin Scott. I live off Jones Drive in Mevin. Um, I want to speak about the gun ranges just a minute. And for transparency purposes, I use indoor gun ranges. And I have firearms and stuff that this gentleman's approved he just doesn't know it <laughs> and I carry permits and so forth I'm not opposed to gun ranges what I'm opposed to is the noise I live one mile from the Durham gun range my house has two to six walls in it insulated with foam and I would invite any of you at any time on Saturdays and Sundays to come down they're open from 8 to sundown on Saturdays and they're open from 10 to sundown on Sundays. You'd like a little peace and quiet once in a while. And there's got to be a compromise somewhere. Now what I'm going to do before I get, I haven't done all the research, but what I have done is we're hiring a forensic sound 
folks that they will come in and space you know, where we live, put up the devices to record decibels. When they reach a certain point, they start recording. And then I'll come back to you. But it is one of the most annoying things. And I know that they talk about, it sounds like dynamite, and I can't uh, discuss the one that you, this all brought about because I know nothing about it. But I would invite you out, and you would be very surprised, probably shocked at what you hear. Sometimes it looks, sounds like just a big group of them are lining up see who can shoot the fastest or whatever, and now that really gets loud. Just once in a while, or just, you know, it's not a problem. And with all the homes that are coming in around us now, I think every personal homeowner's got a gun range in the backyard. And we actually have a police officer that was doing that from Hart River. And I had to go remind him that I own all the land behind him, and he's shooting across where a high school, the property has five miles of trails, and they run um, cross country there. Went and told him, said, it could be considered an accident now, but it won't be now that I've informed you that there's children back there. And as I said, I am not opposed to gun range. I'm opposed to the bad gun noise, and it's unbelievable. And it's getting worse, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any commissioner responses? There being none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. I see our new county manager, by the way. Mm -hmm. so. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Uh, interim manager. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, we're going to item number seven, uh, seven point one. That's a proclamation, and I see our health director approaching. <laughs> Good morning, commissioners. Um, as I always do, anytime I get a chance to go before a microphone or in the public, I want to give a big thanks and shout out to the men and women at the health department for providing excellent customer service every day to the customers of Alamance County. So before you is a proclamation proclaiming it Public Health Week, which starts today and goes all the way through uh, Sunday. And if, Mr. Chairman, if I may, if I can read it here. Absolutely. Right. In fact, all the commissioners have already signed. So if you want to hold this one up and read from it. Oh, awesome. All right, here we go. Whereas, we hereby recognize and acknowledge 84 years of public health service to the residents of Alamance County as well as the vast contributions of these services to the quality of life in our communities. <coughs> and whereas the American Public Health Association has adopted the theme of public health is where you are for the 2022 recognition of National Public Health Week. And whereas Alamance County Health Department has continued to educate the public, policymakers, and health professionals about the issues important to improving the public's health. And whereas there is a significant difference in life expectancy and health status, such as obesity, poor mental health, and cancer across socioeconomic regions of the county, and this variance increases due to social determinants that negatively impact health, such as poverty, transportation barriers, and economic opportunity. And whereas public health plays a crucial role in the foundation of good health and quality of life lived, by working to immunize people against disease, working, control, working to control environmental health hazards and infectious disease, improving the health of mothers and children, and promoting healthy behaviors in areas of substance and tobacco use and misuse, physical activity, dental health, and nutrition. And whereas public health professionals help communities prevent, prepare for, withstand, and recover from the impact of full range of health threats, including disease outbreaks such as coronavirus or emerging illness, national, natural disasters, and disasters caused by human activity. 
And whereas public health plays a critical role in eliminating, elim eliminating health inequities and preventing chronic disease and injuries, resulting in improved productivity and decreased health costs for all Alamount County residents. And whereas this is a continued focus on health promotion, disease prevention, and environmental equity through collaborative partnerships with a multitude of agencies in the community to find solutions to health issues. Now therefore, we, the Alamance County Board of Commissioners for the County of Alamance, do hereby proclaim April 4th through the 10th, 2022, as Public Health Week in Alamance County, and call upon the people of Alamance County to observe this week by helping our community better understand the value of public health and supporting great opportunities to adopt preventive lifestyle habits in light of this year's national observance, public health is where you are. And we thank you Absolutely. Uh, for your excellent work for this proclamation and its presentation. And if, you'll, if you're going back the same way, hand those to our clerk. Uh, we'll give you an originally signed copy as well. Excellent. Well, dear. Thanks thank you. so much. Thank you, Tony. April is Child Abuse Awareness Month also, isn't it? It is as well. Yeah. Awesome. Mr. Morcom. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, just in case I should misspeak, I've brought a copy of what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> my, my name is Peter Morecambe. I'm here to represent Financial Reform for Excellence in Education, otherwise known as FREE. FREE is a charter school organization that has created six charter schools in North Carolina, and two of those are in Alamance County, uh, namely the River Mill Academy and the Clover Garden School. I just want to make four points. There's a huge demand for school choice. That would be the first point. FREE has a proven track record um, for creating charter schools. Charter schools save money, we're very efficient, and finally, charter schools strengthen public K through 12 education generally. So the real problem is why do we need another charter school here? Um, first, there are four charter schools here already, serving roughly 10% of the Alamance uh, population. Two of them, the River Mill Academy and the Clover Garden Schools are free schools, as I said before. The River Mill Academy has 915 students with only 12 vacancies in grades K through to, uh, 1 through 12 for the coming school year. Clover Garden School has about 650 students, about to expand to 955. Um, and they, they don't think that's going to make much of a dent in their waiting list, strangely. Three more, 300 more places, and they don't expect their waiting list to diminish. I, I don't know how that works. Um, second, Free has an excellent education record in terms of conventional measures such as graduation rates, SAT scores, parent satisfaction, that kind of thing. Third, free schools operate under a highly efficient business model that generates substantial cash reserves which we then use to convince banks to lend us money. Lots of money. And um, Alamance County, perhaps because of the taxation situation here, is a magnet for business. So you're growing and you're gonna need more schools. Um, our business model impresses banks, which is why we seldom get turned down when applying for loans. Fourth, public, school, public charter schools complement rather than weaken other public schools. Charter and traditional public schools must all conform to the same guidelines, and both are subject to government oversight. Charter schools are overseen by the DPI in Raleigh, we would do better with oversight from local government. And since you will care uh, about us more than the people we never see, and uh, if we were part of the ABSS, parents would have more choices and school board meetings would be less acrimonious. Uh, I, I don't think school board meetings should be like the Oscars. Um, no one knows the best way to educate a child, but Charter schools can help by creating more diverse teaching 
environment where schools with different approaches can help each other, um, can learn from one another. Finally, I realize I've been going about this entirely the wrong way. I keep coming here asking you for money and letters of approval and such like. I think it's time I brought something to you. And I'm taking my inspiration from Craig Turner, who found an amusing way to honor the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I can't do quite as good a job, but this is what I brought for you. It's a charter proposal. <laughs> it, this, is, this is what will become another school. Um, I know it sounds crazy, it's just a piece of paper. But it's always worked in the past. And now I get to get back to my script. Well, the, um, uh, now, do we get to keep the bag as well? Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a nice bag, actually. Um, all right. The, uh, in this bag, uh, it's the charter that I proposed, to, or at least the the bound of base documents for a charter that should go be submitted on Friday, April the 8th. Um, please have your staffers read it, and if there's anything before the, if you're going to give me a support letter before the support letter, make sure there's nothing in there that could harm Alamance County. Uh, that, that seems important. Um, now, a bit more about free. We already have collected $178,000 to start the school. We have got the startup funds already. Well, I told you we did, we'd, we'd do better if, if we asked you for money, but we don't actually need it. <laughs> um, as mentioned earlier, free has a highly effective business model. It's a secret only because nobody's ever asked us what it is. <laughs> so uh, one of our rules is that free board members cannot write checks. And we don't allow employees to write checks. Uh, we hire, uh, now, well, in the past, we hired Acadia North Star Consulting in Raleigh to write our checks. Now, that seems a bit silly. We could have somebody here in Graham write checks for us and pay them to do it. And uh, so th the point of this is if we have somebody writing our checks who is bonded and insured and they steal our money, we get it back. So that's why we do it. Um, that's part of our business model, of course. Since the Unity Global Economy will be located in Alamance County, Free would like to hire a local bonded disbursement agent. The agent could be employed by the county commissioners or be chosen by them, either one. Um, finally, the thing that we're, what we're asking you for the support letter is to take it to Raleigh to the Charter School Advisory Board. Let me tell you about, what, about them. Due to an unforeseen semi truck accident on I-40 on January the 10th that prevented us from attending our scheduled interview with the CSAB, which is, you know, make it or break it. Uh, we, we ha they had no choice but to re reject our proposal because we weren't there and uh, we're not present. Next go round, we're going to stay in a hotel in Raleigh and make sure we're <laughs> going to be on time for the interview. Um, Free plans to resubmit this week, along with some improvements to the application. If we have the, some support from the Alamance County Commissions, we feel it will help our chances big time. And uh, then another public school could open here uh, if you want it. That's my... Thank you. Uh, hang Thank on you, just Morgan. a minute. Commissioners, questions? Um, you said you had $178,000 startup money. Can you explain to everyone where the rest of your money, because I know your school won't cost $178,000 to build. So where does your other funding come from? Well, that's our only funding right now. We're going to right. grow that to three or four million. Uh, that would be the down payment on the school building. Who's but we're with? doing that by investments. Oh, investments? Okay. So yeah. you have in private investors? I do. Okay. Uh, if you want to know where it comes from, uh, see this lady over here? That's Louise Cole. She's one of our board members. She chipped in a... Uh, how much you chipped in? 80. 80 yeah. of, of your own money. That's amazing. Oh, and that's her husband sitting next to her. Nice to meet you. Did you know? I'm sorry. I was going to ask your husband, did you know that she gave 80000 No. 
Just kidding. Those seats you block. Seems like before. every guy or girl that speaks here, if their husband or wife isn't here, shh, don't tell them I'm here. I don't understand that. We're watching you on television. Uh -huh. It's really cute. But thank you so if much. He's like most commitment. husbands, it didn't matter whether he knew or not. Oh. <laughs> right? We've hey. got supporters of education. We have six children, 18 grandchildren. Nothing is more important right. than education. You Amen. are so right. It's your key out of Absolutely. whatever situation you're in, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Commissioners, any oh, other yeah. questions? Uh, Mr. Morcom. Sir. Uh, Craig, do you want to no, go? Go ahead, sir. Uh, why don't you explain to this board how you are investing your money? Oh, uh, in very, very risky things that, that no responsible person would do. Um, <laughs> but Louise and I can do it because it's, it's our money. Absolutely. And uh, I just made an investment. I've only made one trade in the last three months. I bought. I think it was 3,000 rune mm -hmm. altcoins, about $30,000. But you, the reason I'm even bringing that up is uh, you're actually um, doing something that a lot of people in the country are actually very interested in, and that's the crypto blockchain yeah. technology. Exactly. Uh, I like the blockchain technology. The cryptos scare me a bit, but you know, I'm, I'm able, you know, being in the finance industry for so long, I, I know how to navigate through that. Um, but I was just thinking, you know, just looking at your um, how you're investing your money, um, you're at the cutting edge. And a lot of folks who are listening to me right now are going to realize in the next five to eight years that decentralized finance is going to take over our financial system, whether we like it or not. Uh, and I think everyone should start to embrace this aspect of investing because it is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Been around about 10 plus years. And the next 10 or plus years are going to be extremely exciting. And I uh, applaud you for uh, being ahead of the curve. Uh, a lot of folks, I know a lot of folks who have 20, 30 years experience in, on Wall Street are apprehensive to wade in that at water because of the unknowns. And uh, I applaud the fact that you are uh, ahead of the curve on not only on the, the school system, but how you're, how you're funding it. I think it's extremely impressive. Well, it's our money. If we lose it, yes, if, sir. If 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 we multiply it by a hundred, as we as we think this room will multiply by a hundred in the next eighteen months, then you'll get a school out of it, mm -hmm. and it, it it'll be seem almost effortless. Of course, if we lose the money, it's lost. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're not, Let's we're, hope that don't happen. Thank you. Well, looking at the, today, I think you're doing well. Mr. A couple of questions, uh, Mr. Is it is it Morcom? Morcom, yes. Yeah. Morcom. Um, I have no doubt charter schools look well to the balance sheet. Uh, they're, gr they're great ideas. I just want to follow up on some of the comments you've made today just to understand it better. So the, what is the Unity Global Academy and how is it different from other charter schools in the county and public schools? It, it'll essentially be identical in um, management structure to the River Mill Academy and the Clover Garden School. They're still operating on the model I gave them. I have no participation whatsoever. They do what they want. Free spins off the, the school once it's viable. We, we won't manage this school for more than 18 months. But is the curriculum any different than yes. existing? So, how, uh, how is, like, so if, if I'm a parent <clears throat> and I'm thinking, should I apply? for a lottery for a student, for my kid to get in. How, how, what is different about this school and why would I apply? See, that, that's a key question. Um, I, I would prefer uh, that I don't specify the curriculum, that the, parent, the local parents make that decision. But if I say it's open to the local community, the people in Raleigh said, well, we're not going to give you a charter. So I'm absolutely forced to specify a curriculum. So I, I just pick the best one there is. Uh, you've never heard of it, but there's 10,000 schools in 160 countries that use this curriculum. Uh, so it, it's not it's it it's the same curriculum that we we used in the Woods Charter School back in 1998, and the Wood within four years the Woods School was number one in North Carolina out of 357 schools. I mean, we we overtook the Chapel Hill Carver City Schools like we was like they were standing still. Is, is the name Global Academy, is that, is that, um, I, I'm wondering, is that the curriculum that you're using? It's global, yeah. Okay, is that, is that the reason for the name? I'm just trying to get, yes, yes. I, I'm just trying to get more about what, what makes it different. It, it's different because it, it is an international, we've got 30 different 
modern languages and six ancient languages that are available to be taught on the curriculum. Nobody can do that, but you could, if they want to learn Greek in this town, fine, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, that, that, that's the beauty of it. There's a huge choice because you can't do everything, so the, the local community will get to pick what they want and what they don't want. Mr. Chairman, I think there's some additional information from Yep. Go ahead. The name of the curriculum is Cambridge Assessment. Oh, okay. I went to Cambridge University. <laughs> 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 Might be part of it. Um, I figured you weren't from North Carolina. Right? Uh, and I, I just didn't understand your comments about, about structure. Um, you would advise that the ABSS take control of the... Well, we'd love to work for the ABSS, sure. But okay. we, is that, is that, I think it would be even legal. better working for you guys because uh, you'd care whether we succeed or not. There's a possible conflict of interest between us and the ABSS. Uh, uh, but, you know, we would willingly work for them if that's the only way. Well, I know the funds for charter schools go through ABSS, and I, I think they don't need to because charter schools are on their own. They need to get their money directly instead of having to go through ABS. But that's always been a controversy. Mm -hmm. I think, does the state not require that? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's it's DPI. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Well, we have to report to people in Raleigh, but they, 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 they don't even, we don't even know who the person is, you know. Well, we, it could be a different person each day. I guess my question is, I, I don't know that we have the authority to dictate that structure. You could ask for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure can. Um, and then you, you said that maybe the county could hire the, the bonding agency? Is that what you... Well, or tell us, you know, tell us somebody you've got confidence in. We, we'll pay for it. I mean, that, that's something we have to pay for. The, so for some people in the public school world, um, they see charter schools as a negative. But you're, but I, I just want to, I just want to get your opinion on this because you said at the beginning that, that charter schools are, are, strengthen public schools, and I just wanted your your thoughts on why that is. I think uh, actually it's quite simple. We are a public school, so I, I don't see how we're we're hurting public education if we are public education. I'm not, uh, people can come to us. We can't turn anybody away. We except unfortunately for, we don't have enough places. <laughs> That's the problem. So how would you s select the students who apply? We don't, we're not allowed to. Well, there's some we, method, there's some method. Well, let, let me tell you what happened last month. In uh, the River Mill Academy, uh, had a lottery. And 407 applicants for 12 seats. So a lot of people feeling very unhappy they didn't get, a, get, a, get in. Um, but the, the, the solution to have more seats, not to, you know, so we'd like to create charter schools until there's so many seats, no, uh, uh, there's no lottery anymore. So the method is the lottery. Mm -hmm. um, in your presentation to the school board in 2000, you mentioned transportation with the Clover Garden School. Yes. Is there, a, is there an idea to have transportation available to the new school? Uh, that's a legal, we, we don't have any option on that. And uh, if you'll notice that the River Mill Academy and the Clover Garden School all have their own bus system. Okay. Um, as far as I know, it's not integrated with the Alamance Burlington City School, uh, school System, but it could be. Uh, and I'm not sure that would be an advantage or disadvantage, but, but <coughs> they do provide bus service, yes. And they pay for that, don't they? Absolutely, yes. Uh, and, and they don't have any options. So. Do you see er at every single turn this gentleman takes out the taxpayer. At every right. single turn, he takes out what the taxpayer is responsible for. And that's why I think it's important to uh, look what he's got to offer and see if there's some way that we can help. You okay. receive the same per student uh, Amounts of money from the state, do you not? We do get per money camera. from you, uh, and and it's beautiful because it's equal. It's, it's utterly fair. Exactly the same I, it's as government a being fair. ABSS student, yeah. correct? We don't get more, we don't get less. Correct. Thank you. That's right. That's okay. Um, I was just going to say I'd, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we approve his request for a letter. And let's Second. I totally agree. Um, I called this gentleman over the weekend and asked him a number of questions. He had an answer for every single question I had. Uh, he appears to really know his business. Uh, the two schools that he's already, uh, Clover Garden and, and uh, River Mill, are excellent schools and have a really good reputation. Uh, I'm going to vote for this as well. 
the question I would have is exactly how do we put this letter together and what are we authorized to put in it and what are we not? And I'm not sure that's a fair question to ask either you or legal counsel. I think that is something that um, I can work with Deborah on to, to draft something. I had, I had actually asked Mr. Morecambe to um, bring us a draft letter. Um, we've got a draft letter from Mayor um, Talley, but I think our letter would probably look a little bit different, so I can work with um, legal on that. And Mayor Talley's letter was in favor of this as well. It was. Mm -hmm. Just one question. We don't have um, a budget item that we fix charter schools' roofs or HVACs or anything like that. That's strictly public school. Okay, that's, I just want to make sure that that's part of our budget. That's all. Ms. Lux, has staff seen the, um, this application to the state that Mr. Morgan uh, spoke of earlier today? Yeah, we, I, we've gone on the um, DPI website to look at their charter application. Right. Um, any issues? No. Legal would probably want to take a look at this as well. I don't know how much legal's looked at it yet. I think uh, this hook indicated that uh, Deborah okay. would look at it. Okay, good. So Thank you. Either, either of you guys, whoever knows okay. <laughs> with your firm. Any other comments? What's your deadline? My personal deadline is the... 8th of April, which is Friday. The state deadline is April the 29th, because I'm a project manager. I like to get things in two or three weeks early because something might go wrong. Uh, but if, if working with the county means extending a week, I can do it. Okay. My only thought, Mr. Chairman, is it, it, it might make sense for us to, to, to look at what Mr. Morgan has brought with him today. Uh, let legal take a deep dive in that just to make sure we've done it right across our T's. And I'd also like to just Make sure I know what the letter's going to say before I sign off on it. So, I would say we instruct staff to move in this direction. That we've got that there's a positive feeling from the board about it, but that we we take care of those things and in our next meeting authorize those two things. That would take a modification that the motion that's on the floor. I'll accept that. I don't understand why, uh, uh, Mr. Turner. I think this is about as cut and dry as you're going to get. I don't think you're going to have anything that's going to be this cut and dry in a in a in a in a, in a law in a legal room in a court case, and this is not going to be uh, it's not going to be off anybody's behind going forward with this. It's going to be absolutely no. We he's asking for nothing except support, and I don't think that legal is going to knock us down because this man has been doing this for decades. He's got his eyes and his T's crossed. I just think we should make, I mean, make it easy on this man. I mean, he's doing something for the county taxpayers and the citizens of this county. We should support him. And if legal's got a problem, they can come back to us in a, in today, tomorrow. This man's got a deadline and we need to work with him. I'm not, I'm saying let's not, I am full confidence that at things that he has shown me legal, He's he's in the he's in a sweet spot, if you ask me. May I ask um, Mr. Carter to amend his motion to the extent that subject to approval by county manager and legal that we do the letter as quickly as possible. Uh, that'll give us a chance to review it and whatever. But go ahead and vote on it subject to the approval of legal and county manager. I'm fine, and I'm fine if if legal finds something wrong, they'll. They'll let us know right. immediately. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I'm good. I'm with that. fine with that. So you're willing to make I'm that? I'm willing to that make that move? amendment. Yes. And are you willing to accept that amendment? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if for some out of this world reason we vote to approve this, because I'm for all children wherever they go to school, yeah. and legal has oh in paragraph four, row six, it was should have been ed instead of es. I'm, I mean, you lawyers, I know how you do. <laughs> and I'm just saying, will we? Will we be able to be contacted and say well, we need to do a redo, a vote of this? We just have lawsuits, and we don't want any more. And that's, that has nothing to do with you, sir. I'm just saying that we just need to make sure the T's and the I's are done what they're supposed mm -hmm. to. 
regardless. I'm just talking about the sure. letter, not the child, because I don't care where kids go to school as long as they're happy and doing well. That's all that matters to me. Yep. So. And we are a target. A target. Day. We're a target for lawsuits. Well, I, I, I agree. well, we just don't need to earn them. <laughs> no, well, I can, so, I can understand. That's I can all under, I'm saying. I, I can understand everyone's uh, situation here, but you know, I actually have done the deep dive on what you've done over the past 20 years and have you ever been sued we've been sued yes <laughs> sure we have. but then we have to pay for that sir sure. yeah. absolutely well i actually worked to help them help with some financing on i think it was river mill way yeah. back in the day it's true i know what happens but i know that your situation the way you have your documents in order uh, i would be completely confident with legal and Commissioner Turner taking a look at them since he's a lawyer. I'd be completely confident. I'm not sure what the motion is. Madam Clerk, could you repeat the motion? <laughs> okay. Right. So what I understood that it was amended to move forward with the approval of a letter of support. Um, as long as there was no um, issues with legal or the county manager. Right. Spalding? I, I don't know what letter of support means. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to vote for this. Uh, but that's fine. If y'all want to go for it, it's fine. What I would do is wait, make sure we've got the letter that we, that we can't agree on and the legal's approved and, and voted on at the next meeting, which I think would be fine. That's where I am. Your deadline's the 28th. Yes, but I, I, I'm, it would be very dangerous to let it go beyond Friday because I mean, if, we, if we can't have your letter by Friday, when's the next meeting? Two weeks? 18th. 18th. Oh, it's getting Question. Awfully, awfully close. Can you do the 48-hour thing? We all come up here and go, yeah, and then we go. I mean, I just am, I'm just concerned about the legality of this. Nothing else. That's it. Um, I mean, for a special meeting, yeah, you would need 48 hours notice, and you need to be publicized. Yeah. I'm just saying, just cover too. everything. Because mm -hmm. I want I mean, this to succeed, but I also want it to be everything that's supposed to be as far as legal. That's all. You're a lawyer. You should take Mm. Well, I'm ready to vote for it today. Me too. Uh, I'm doing the homework as Mr. Lashley has, and uh, I think everything that I saw was very, very positive. Okay. I'm not sure what the legality infraction might be. I, uh, I can't think of this is a letter of support. This is not a guarantee. Mm -hmm. It is not um, anything beyond a letter of support for this gentleman and his, uh, his group to move forward. Uh, I don't understand all the uh, the concern, but uh, just the, call you know, the vote. difference difference in, in two attorneys, I guess. <laughs> uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. No. All right. Three and two. And discussion is simply. To the lawyers to look at it. Nothing against the school. And we cannot accept the bag, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it kind of goes with my tie today. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Thank you, sir. Okay, pass three to two. Thank you. <coughs> county manager and county legal, we appreciate your taking this in hand and uh, hope that you will get back with us hopefully maybe later this week. Thank you. Okay, um, Miss Morris. She's uh, joining us through Zoom. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? We can. Great. My name is Connie Morris, and I'm the executive director at Friendship Adult Day Services in Burlington, North Carolina. Um, I see several familiar faces in this room, people that have been to our AAA meetings for aging and folks who serve on boards. And Sherry Hook, your interim 
county manager. First day on the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm here to talk about, I'm going to give you just a quick overview of what Friendship does and has been doing in Alliance County for the last 41 years, and then let you know the issue that we've come up with that's an emergency issue. Um, we are a social model adult day program. We're certified by the state of North Carolina to operate, and we did a nonprofit filing one since 1981 here in Alamance County. Our services include a variety of day programming designed to meet the needs of participants for the purposes of supporting their independence and allowing adults to remain living at home for as long as possible, where research has shown they thrive better. Um, we serve all age adults. A lot of folks think we only work with elderly folks, but we don't. It's all age participants there. We have people with uh, mild to moderate forms of autism, Down syndrome, developmental disabilities. We have people that have had a mild to moderate stroke and can no longer drive, so they're isolated in their homes. Um, we have folks with all forms of dementia, the early to moderate stages, including Alzheimer's. And we have folks that have had um, things like multiple sclerosis, where their mind is perfectly fine, but that body just doesn't want to do it for them anymore. We provide social and recreational activities, a friendly safe environment, nutritionally sound lunches and, and snacks. We help folks stay hydrated, which is a major cause of illness in the elderly. They forget to take a drink of water. We do daily exercise programs. We have supervised medication administration, anything that's oral. Say you have a pill, you need to take it once, you make sure you get that. We encourage social, physical, and emotional well-being and try to provide an interactive, family-type environment for our folks. That's what we do for the people who show up. Those are the participants. The other half of what we do is for their caregivers. It gives them a place for their folks to come be safe, happy, while they go to work in the county, while they run the errands they need to run, while they take care of their own health, by being able to go to the doctor and know that their loved one is taken care of. About four years ago, we had a, a local gentleman who had had his sister with us offer us his home first, and then realized that his home, even renovated, would not give us the space we needed to grow. We then were given money from his sister's trust when she passed away. They had built us a brand new building. We, gave, we, we talked him into coming to you guys and giving it to the county because as a small nonprofit, we were concerned about maintenance cost and, and upkeep on a building of that size. In giving it to the county, we also included other entities in it. We also have what's known now as the Open Door Clinic is next door to us, and the Department of Social Services has a large building for child uh, visitation, which is more conducive to children having a good visitation rather than sitting in someone's office while a DSS worker sits in the corner and writes their notes. Um, they're also going to be doing some training on how to use um, EBT, what we used to call food stamps and things like that, to make sure that their children are getting the nutrition that they need. All that was great. Everything was going fine, and then the pandemic hit. Um, we were able to weather the first couple of years of the pandemic. Uh, we closed in March of 2020 because all of our participants, or the people they lived with, were considered high risk. It was considered um, the norm that if it was over 5% positivity rate in the county, that that was not safe for folks. So we closed down in March. I brought up all of my staff. They went on unemployment. I stayed and got a PPP loan to cover my salary until July when the waivers kicked in from the state. We are supported mainly through reimbursement, through um, folks that are placed with us by DSS, or seniors 16 and over who are with us through the funds that we receive through the Old Americans Act. 
and through um, Piedmont Pratt Regional Council governments. Um, we were able to maintain that because of that, because we contacted our folks every single day. We helped them with resources. I joke and tell people that I did everything from telling them when to show up at Walmart to be able to buy toilet paper to legal advice. So we were with them through the pandemic. We provided their birthday cards like we normally have done. We provided Christmas for them, Easter, holidays. We kept in touch with all of our folks and their caregivers. Um, at the end of May, the numbers had gone down significantly and we were able to reopen in June. We were open in June, July, and part of August before the second wave of the pandemic hit with the Omicron virus, the Delta virus. Um, the numbers soared again and we had to shut down. In the meantime, our building was being built and we were originally told that we could expect occupancy around late September, early October. Well, the pandemic hit everything, not just us. So that building completion got pushed up month after month after month. When I closed down, we had had two people that had gone to other positions or jobs right before we closed. So we were only a staff of four. And we had 40 years of things to go through and pack up and get ready for that move. So that's what we've been doing. Um, the building kept getting moved out, Christmas came and went. We finally got to move into the new building the end of January of this year. We were still closed because the numbers were still so high in the county and in the state. Um, the numbers started coming down in February. We had funding through February, basically, and most of March, um, because of a private donation that we received. We also had turned in our certification for the state. We've been certified by the state for 40 odd years, but when you move to a new building, it's almost like it starts all over again. The state also has been hit by COVID. So we were faced with long waiting times. We are still waiting to be certified by the state. They had all of our information for months now, um, and we are waiting to be certified. They are coming Wednesday of this week. And we're hoping that everything is in order and we can get that certification. What that has done to us, though, it has put us in a financial line. We are, have not been able to draw down any funding since August. We were relying on funding we had built up. We tried to keep about three months or so built up anyway. That's the norm for nonprofits, but that money's going pretty quickly. Um, we actually ended March 35, about $3,500 in the hole. Um, so that's that's where we are now. Uh, rising costs have increased. Um, food costs, as you know, has gone up. Um, costs for our internet service and all those things have gone up somewhat. So we're right at we're at, right at a two hundred seventy-five thousand dollar budget a year, about twenty-two five a month, and we think that might go up a little bit based on the food costs once we get back into ordering and getting all of that and looking at what we've been looking at. So we're basically coming to the county to ask for emergency funding. We know that there's some COVID funding out there that might be able to be used for that. I called around last week when we found out we were not going to be able to do it again. I'm waiting on the state right now. Um, and I spoke with um, Pam Thompson, who comes to our AAA meetings. Um, Steve's been at those meetings as well. He comes, he knows what we do. We are a vital service in this community, and we are literally at the brink of having to shut down before we can even open up in our new building. Um, we are asking the county to fund us for two months, and that $3,500 for March that I can't find funding for. Um, just to get us through, we can open up. Once we open up, we don't get reimbursed till the next month. So whenever we open in April, we will get reimbursed for that in March. So we're not open yet. It's probably going to take us at least a week with vendors and things to get on board. We've got everybody kind of waiting in the wings uh, for this certification. Once it's done, we're ready to open. We have 18 participants of our 28 that we started with. We were not allowed to add any one more we want waivers. And by attrition and normal things that happened with our population, we lost 10 of those folks. 
Um, we have 16 people on our waiting list waiting to come into our building for those services. It will take us several weeks to get those on board. So we're looking at June probably being our first real full reimbursement. So we are asking for two months of funding plus a little bit from March that is still owed. So we're asking the county if they could see fit to give us emergency funds to keep us in operation um, at a rate of $50,000. When I was in Elements County Service League, we would volunteer to go over there to uh, interact with folks that were staying there. Snacks, crafts, I'm a master gluer, just let me say that. <laughs> and um, it's um, an absolutely amazing program because these folks get socialized, plus their caregiver gets to take a breath. Well, we've seen in COVID when um, different types of all kinds of populations were isolated in the home, how unhealthy it is. And we've got a mental health cluster going through our country, I'm sure the world as well. So I can't say enough nice things about this. Mr. Petrie started all this for this very foundation. And, um, and that has led to Diversion Center and all kinds of other things. He had just, just the kindest heart of ever to give of himself. And uh, I just think we need to do what we can because I'm seeing ARP funds go out to all kind of different things that um, are hard, physical stuff, sewer water, all, the, all this kind of stuff, internet, broadband, all that. And I think that's great as well. But um, I think we need to do everything we can to support this agency. They've been around for a long time and it's a crying shame when you get a building built that you can't even go in it yet because of whatever reason. And I'm sure her numbers are gonna grow because she's gonna have more room. And, um, and that's gonna be more available services for families in this county that, don't, that have struggles within their own family. And I think we need to do everything we can as commissioners that work for the public and serve our citizens to take care of this population. Let me ask one question. My yes. understanding is that our money would not apply in this case. Is that fact or fiction? So, so in order to use our money, we would have to enter into an, a contract with the agency to provide services on behalf of the county. Since they are not operating right now, we could not enter into that contract. So they would not be eligible for ARP funding right now. So if they were able to find funding for a few months until they opened, at that point we could enter into a contract, but we can't do that right now. I've done some more um, asking around, and it's my understanding that that's not just for ARP, that's also for county funding as well. So we would ha they would have to be providing services on behalf of the county. You're saying we're prohibited from making this? this, this um, Unless we can enter into a contract that they are providing services for our citizens on behalf of the county, yes. Which we, they would not be able to do right now. As soon as they open, that would be a different story. Sherry, can I speak for a second? We, I'm not sure how the county looks at that, that we are not providing services. We are still providing those daily calls to all of our folks. We are still providing resources for them. We are still finding things that they need. Um, we've never stopped that, even though we weren't paid to do it, we weren't on the waiver system. This, since July of the last year, we, we have never stopped that. So we are still providing those services to the county. Um, I don't know what a contract would look like. Um, we have a contract with the county for the building already. They provide, the, the county provides that building to us for a dollar a year, which they have done. We have never taken any funding per se from the county, specifically other than that in-kind donation of the building space. So there's a contract that exists already with the county for the building, and then we pay our share of all of the utilities that are there. So I don't know if something could be done while we are still closed question even with the <coughs> gazillions of dollars we have in our fund balance fifty thousand dollars couldn't be taken out of that it's my understanding that we'd have to have a contract for services with them staff can do some research to see if what they are doing right now mm -hmm. um, would qualify 
but um, I, I think that the service would be that the in individuals are actually in the facility, um, but we can do research on that to see. But it, we can't just make a donation right. to them. Should we table, I'm asking the board, should we table this to our uh, April 18th meeting for research from legal and county manager? Yeah, Connie. Um, the issue we have before us right now is that I have paid for on the 15th of April. If I can't, I can't make payroll. We're already $3,500 in the hole. That's my paychecks for March. I haven't cashed them yet. So I'm holding that money back because we don't have the funds for it yet. Um, and I'm willing to keep doing that if I need to for a while. But I have payroll to meet on the 15th. I have bills to pay on the 15th. We pay twice a month, 15th and 30th. So I was hoping that there was some way we could get some kind of, of closure on this. We have reached out to our bank about trying to get a line of credit mm -hmm. to maybe hold that off, but we have not heard back from them yet. They're like everyone else. COVID has stymied everything, and it still is. People are out of place. People are doing different jobs. People are doing jobs they never did before, so they're having a hard time with that. Um, so it, it's, it's basically getting down to a crunch situation, and the majority of it now, we have weathered the storm for two and a half years. And it's just getting to the point where we can't do it anymore. So th this is this is what I'm looking at. I think Mr. Lashley has questions. Yeah, I just have one one um, one question just to see how how your organization reacted uh, back when COVID started. Yes. And, and I'm going back to the start of COVID, uh, that two and a half year period. Uh, yes. I just have one question. Did you continue to pay staff although you were a closed or not seeing patients? When, when we closed down in March of 2020, we laid everyone off except myself because I had to be there to do the work to get the was grant season for us. We didn't know how long COVID was going to last. But we went after a PPP loan to pay my salary. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then in July, when the waivers came down from the state, my staff stayed laid off because, again, we didn't know when we could open. Yeah. I was the only one that was on. I did the grant work. I did the reporting. There are a lot of things that have to happen even when nobody's there. We still had bills that had to be paid. We still had grants that had to be written. We still had um, people that had to be called. So I stayed on board, and I did all the calling, all of the letter writing, all of the birthday card sending, all of the Christmas stuff. We did all of that that entire year while we shut down. We only started, we only brought staff back in June of 2021 when we opened back up and had participants in the building. When we closed down in the middle of August, we were under the impression that we were going to be moving in about six to eight weeks. And the four staff that I still had out of six remain to go through all of our building and pack up and get ready for the move. Um, we also did, we were also looking ahead because again, nobody knew when this pandemic would ebb or rise again. We didn't know how long we were going to be closed. And it was getting extremely hard to hire anyone because people weren't returning to the workforce. So we kept our four staff on board while we packed up and got ready for the move. Hoping that we were going to be opening, you know, any month now we are going to be in the new building. And that just kept getting put off because of COVID issues. Um, back orders, people not showing up for work, people unable to work, um, all of that. But, I mean, everybody worked very well. There was another piece to that. We were under the impression that we were going to receive some additional funding from the building fund. But we weren't talking apples to apples, and it was nobody's fault. Nobody knew. We didn't know what we didn't know. We didn't know what we didn't know. The original money that was put down was $2.5 million. And in that first meeting, Mr. Petrie said, if we come in under budget, then I will divide that money among the entities in the building. 
We were being told all along that we were coming in around $100,000 in the budget, so we thought we were going to be getting another $30,000, $35,000. Um, but that was a different budget. We had not been told that the actual cost of the building came in well over $2.5 million, and that Mr. Peter had given additional money to be used for the diversion center after they used whatever they needed for our building. So we were running under the impression that we were going to be receiving some more money once we got into the building and it was finished. That didn't happen. It was nobody's fault, like I said. People just didn't know what the other folks didn't know. So um, that was something that we had in the back of our mind that would tie us over a little bit, and that did not happen. And, and Connie and I just talked about that uh, this past Monday, so she just right. learned that that money was not going to be available to them. Mr. Chairman, go. Oh, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Hook, we've talked about um, Friendship Adult Day Services being an agency. Is it is it an agency or is it a standalone nonprofit? It's a standalone, it's a standalone, nonprofit. standalone nonprofit. Okay, yes. so it's not connected with county government. It is not. No. It is housed in one of our buildings, rent space from us, but it is not connected to county government. Okay, thank you. Question. I know it's the last budget season. Um, we met with everybody, and we um, gave some funding to Crossroads and to Family Abuse Services. They're not county agencies, are they? They're providing services. Yeah, right, but they're so not we, county we, agencies. We have contracts with them okay. to provide services on behalf of the county. Okay, okay. Question. Go ahead. Sorry. Can we make a loan? Can the county make a loan to them as a? I'm going to defer to the finance team about that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at y'all. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy. Just speaking off the cuff without doing any research, I don't believe you can. I I'd have to, I'd have to really look into that. I don't well, believe I don't so. In general, that's the only thing I could think of. Yeah, no. I would think in general you cannot make loans. I mean, I've had some experience with them too. There. A wonderful agency and uh, our wonderful service to the citizens of Alamance County. So, and we also the other thing is that that we employ people from the county. We allow care caregivers to work in the county. We use local services for our catering. We don't go to Greensboro to get our catering. We do it right here. We um, also use an accounting firm that's right here in the county. So we support the county financially as well as allowing our caregivers to support the, the county. Um, it's just it's just that, you know, two and a half years for a small nonprofit is a long time to to struggle with the financial stuff and we did it as long as we could. And a lot of things came together and most of it due to COVID and things that were going on, not being in person meetings, things like that. Um, we felt like we did everything we could do and we were good stewards of the monies that we had received, um, but it's, it's just got to the point where we can't do it anymore. Ms. Morris, I, I think everybody on this board is very, very sympathetic to the cause, to the need. We all, I, I believe, know what a wonderful service you and your agency have done for LMS County. Um, the problem I have, <coughs> Again, it's those pesky lawyers again. Uh, and, yeah, we just don't, I don't see a way that we can legally do what you're requesting, which is why I don't want to turn you down. I'm suggesting that we table this until our next meeting, which is two weeks from today. We'll be close by then, sir. Unless we can get that bank to give us a lot of credit. I can't have people coming in working that aren't going to get paid, so. I'm, I, I'm just between a rock and a hard place, I guess you'd call it. So the very agency, the reason the building was built for, might possibly close, and the very gentleman that donated all this, <laughs> hmm. and some of that money got flipped over to the diversion center, which is fine. I, I'm just curious what he would have thought. So, I mean, it's something to really think about here when it comes down to a principle of something between what's right and what's wrong. And I know you get hands tied with all this legal stuff. I just, you know, it was about a legal contract, the letter of support, whatever that looks like, because um, we have to be. But um, this is, uh, this is, I'd have to say the word be embarrassing. 
if we let something like this happen to an agency like that. They're a proven record. They serve a population that not everybody does. And um, we have to find a way. Yeah, if there what is suggestion a way. do you have? I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I just think I that um, we just have to find a way. I mean, how embarrassing to get a building built for them and they won't even be able to open up in it because of COVID, the demon COVID. And there's money being handed out for all kind of things because of COVID. And I know this is one of those regulations, but um, I don't know if maybe someone could look at what a contract would look like. I mean, Sherry, I understand all the legality of everything, but what kind of contract do you have with the other ones that we couldn't do as well if we're serving participants in the community? Good point. I think the only bad thing. I don't know what their contracts look like. It's like a July thing. Yeah, I, th I think the it, it's being um, caught between a rock and a hard mm -hmm. place because I think it's easy to enter into enter into a contract when you have um, per clients coming into the building and you are servicing them in the building. It's very clear that you are providing a service, and the county can enter into a contract for them to provide that service. The gray area is that they are not having clients inside the building. And so I don't know if the level of service that they're providing right now would really qualify to say that they are providing a service on behalf of the county. That would have to be something that we would look at, legal could help us look at. Um, it is just very gray. Those other agencies were running at the time, their services never stopped and it was very easy to enter into that contract. And the contract would basically be that they are providing the services that they normally provide when they aren't well, open. Well, if, excuse me, if the state comes in on Wednesday and gives me my certification, I can be up and running Monday morning, which is the 11th. When I left the house this morning, BBN had started their fundraisings cycle and they do that every year I'm just what I don't know anything about GoFundMe but is that something you might have been able to look at I don't know anything about it we we actually we have something called Giving Tuesday and we we're part of that every year um, because because the people who normally give to those types of things are financially strapped right down to the sales. That was not much of a success for any of us that did that. I think we ended up with one fifty dollar donor. Um, GoFundMe pages have issues. Um, as a nonprofit, we are there are some things we can and cannot do, and money we can take from different places and can from others and all that kind of stuff. So um, fundraisers are something that we've done in the past. When we have needed additional funds, you know, it's all, like in a home, if your refrigerator breaks, that's something you weren't thinking about that you got to have the money sitting there for. Um, we've done fundraisers in the past with the local community, um, but they have been small in, in nature. I mean, $5,000 here, $6,000 there, something like that. Um, because we are funded by reimbursements through federal and state funds, for the majority, we do have a couple of private pay people from time to time that don't meet the criteria for any of that and can pay their own way. Um, it's just not been something that we've had like a huge fundraiser like say Hills on Hills does every year. We don't have a staff to do it. We're a staff of six, um, not 36. So it's just, it makes it harder for us to do that. Um, had we known that any of this was going to last as long as it did, had we known that the money wasn't really there that we thought, um, had we known waivers weren't going to be offered the second go round with COVID higher than it was the first time, um, yeah, we could have made a, we could have done a lot differently, but we didn't know those things. And so we, like I said, I think we've been very good stewards of the money we received, and we've done the best we could with it. Can you survive long enough for? our county management and legal to look at what a contract would look like and whether or not it can be handled without you being operating out of the facility 
and I'm seeing a hand up in our audience. I'm willing to concede some time to the question. Can a private citizen loan them the money? Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. And how much would you have to have to make it to that contract period? I think she said. It depends on the contract. Could it become available? I don't know how big the county is. You said, you said thirty-four hundred. What do you need for that? Fifteen. Well, we have thirty-five hundred dollars right now that we are in. Um, in the hole, basically, about thirty-five hundred dollars. Um, but we have to have. We have to purchase food. We have to purchase um, things like that to bring people in. Uh, of course, you know, we've not had, there's no food in the cupboards, there's, there are no supplies for those folks to come in. Um, basic things, toilet paper, paper towels, all the things that we have to purchase every month. Would $10,000 get you through the 15th? Yes. I'm willing to loan them $10,000. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. You're awesome. <laughs> Amen. Who is that? Louise. Well, Louise, Louise, what's your last name? Cole. C-O-L-E. That's very generous of you. I would suggest uh, also after the meeting we uh, get in touch with the United Way and maybe uh, Ms. Morris get you in touch with the folks at the United Way. This, this today as well. For Impact I'm sorry, what did you say? For Impact Impact the, the, the Elements. Then we, we connect you with the United Way, Impact Elements. Oh, I'm already connected with the United Way. I just wanted the people to tell me to come to you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, we, we are very connected with the United Way. Um, we're part of the community council here. And um, Heidi was one of the people I called last week after Sherry and I talked. And they were also looking at, you know, because sometimes I used to work with the United Way years ago. Not here, but in another county. And... We would have folks from time to time that had money from the states and things that they wanted to donate to make a difference in their communities. Um, the, the problem that I have this whole is that that $10,000 will give me through the 15, but then if nothing comes of it, I will, I will have felt like you have put your money not made it to the best use. Um, it's I think it's amazing that you want to give us that money. It's like I said, we had another funder come through in February. They kept us going through most of March. It's um, the risk, and my husband knows about it. <laughs> 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 my it's a you guys are so good. <laughs> oh my but gosh, I already so understand cute. the risk because <laughs> if, the, if the county can't figure out some way to help us out, which legally I understand all that, I and I can't get the line of credit from the bank that we need. I'm a high um, risk individual. What can I say? <laughs> I know. We, well, we love you for it, and I appreciate it. Oh and I will take it. <laughs> so but I just wanted you to know what, what, what the um, I know. risk was. Boy, I think that's all we can do today on this issue. Do you agree? I agree. So, Mr. Chair, just so I understand, um, is it the board's pleasure that we research what a contract would look like with Friendship Adult Day? Yeah, I think that would be excellent. Okay. In yes. warp speed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, warp speed. I like that. Which one is Scotty? <laughs> oh, definitely. Right here. Right here. <laughs> Beam him up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Carl. Okay, how do I get in touch with this caller? How do you want to get in touch with us? I'll let you know. She will contact you. She's indicated. Who do I talk to? Uh, I'm going to be the person that you would talk to. I have a board of directors. You're welcome to talk to them. You're welcome to come and visit us and see our facility. Um, Bring your mask. We'll tip you up and bring you in. <laughs> but um, I will tell you this: I will not be there the rest of the day. I, like a lot of other folks in this community, are a caregiver, and I take my father to the doctor this afternoon. <laughs> so um, I won't be there today, but I will be there tomorrow. And you can give us a call. Um, we're, we've got a Facebook page. We've got a website. Our phone numbers are there. Um, I'll just get my phone number out here. You can get it from someone. It's 336-222-7797. And have you got that? 
I'm just making sure she has the number. 336 7797. 7797. Yes, ma'am. And bless you. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. and God you. always puts mm -hmm. the right people at the right time. That's right. What That's a blessing. So true in there. We've Thank, had a, you. Thank you. We've had a request for a 10 minute recess. Okay, we're officially back in session now. Sheriff Johnson? Yes, sir. Good morning, Commissioner. Sure, he said I had three minutes, so we got to talk real fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm coming for you today to ask you, uh, we are wanting to apply for two grants uh, with the Sheriff's Office, and uh, there's no matching funds, and they're guaranteed. The North Carolina Sheriff's Association work with the legislature to make uh, these monies available. First one is Internet's Crime Against Children. We have a special victims unit. Uh, we buy equipment, training, and all that. It's a $150,000 grant, but it's $75,000 uh, this year, $75,000 next year. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Wait, wait, wait. Who's that grant through? The uh, uh, North Carolina Sheriff's, North 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 Carolina Sheriff's okay. Association and General Simmons. Gotcha. <coughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, now, six. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you all. The next one is uh, uh, for the Alamance County Detention Center. Oh, and Center. No, no county match, by the way. And right. I think right. There's no matches in either of these grants. Correct. Thank <clears> you. <throat> next one is uh, through the Church Association's Alamance County Detention Center. Uh, we're asking to be able to apply for a grant. Uh, for 99280 and that's half the, uh, one year, half next year. And that's to buy uh, uh, COVID stuff at a jail, et cetera. Uh, Motion to approve. Second. Any comments? All in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Again, unanimous. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> you always went... You didn't quite make the two and a half minutes, I don't think. <laughs> Good. <laughs> sure is happy. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Sheriff. You. Okay, Yancey King. Mr. King. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, what I'm, the first item I have is in a budget amendment. Uh, this is part of an emergency management performance grant. Uh, they actually, we had applied each year. We do that as a uh, yearly funding that we get from the state. Uh, this year, they actually had added some additional monies to that. And it was American Rescue Plan Act. Mm -hmm. They've added $15,319.39 to each one of the county's um, grant proposal, but we I do need approval before I can accept that. This is a matching grant, however, uh, we can use money that we already spend for salaries and that type of stuff to be able to further the county's match right. on that. We won't have to have any additional monies to match it with. And I'm understanding that all that's already covered totally. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll make the motion. Second. What's that for? Like, it's just... for our emergency management right. program is what it's for is to help us be uh, do preparedness work, uh, do exercises, training and stuff awesome. uh, for staff in the county and all to be able to respond to your emergencies. Okay, thanks. And the, uh, the amount was $15,319? Yes. Okay. And 39 cents. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the 39 cents is going to buy. Maybe what, what that came bar. out to, they had an X number of dollars and they divided by all 100 counties in the state. Okay. And, uh, wow. That's what they're doing. That's detail. Yeah. That won't buy you, uh, buy you a cup of coffee, will it? The third third <laughs> Not even a cup. <laughs> That's right. Well, it wouldn't qualify for coffee anyway. Yeah. So, okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. All right, your next one. Uh, next one is um, here to request permission to apply for a North Carolina Emergency Management Capacities Building Competitive Grant. This is a competitive grant we are applying for. Uh, and what we have looked at was two projects. We could go up to $400,000. Uh, this is for medium to small counties to be able to get funding for projects. The two projects we have put together, uh, one, the first one is for a generator to be installed on the Mevin Arts Center. 
Uh, Mevin Arts Center is one of our shelter locations, one mm -hmm. of our larger locations. However, it does not have backup power. Currently, we only have three facilities that are on our shelter list that are the large capacity that have generator power. One of them is uh, Fairchild, uh, the other one is uh, Graham Rec, and then we have a transfer switch installed on one of the Lambs Chapel facilities that we can actually put a generator right. on those. Um, we, we've worked out with the, uh, the city of uh, Mebane. They will actually, uh, will enter to an MOU with them if we get this grant. They will manage that uh, generator, do the upkeep that on it once that is put in place. But it's two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars on that portion of it, and this, is, like I said, this is a competitive grant. Not guaranteeing we will get it, but that facility actually is listed as a crest shelter uh, for evacuation from the coast. Uh, so it is a good possibility we will get support from the other uh, state representatives right. and all to put that in there. The second project is also for sheltering. It is a hundred thousand dollars for a mobile shower uh, bathroom trailer. Uh, several of our shelter facilities do not have showers and stuff in those. So if we had people showered in there and having to be there for a long period of time, we would have to bring in shower capability to be able to uh, you know, keep people there. So this is a mobile unit that can be placed at any of our shelter locations if we need it for uh, showers and restrooms. It Would that also, also qualify for contaminated issues? We actually have other equipment to do the contamination stuff with. We've got uh, temporary stuff we can set up for that. Uh, but this right here is just a, uh, it's a handicap accessible trailer. It has three units in there. They're like family restrooms, uh, bathrooms, uh, where you have a shower restroom and all in each one of the compartments on there. One of them is a handicap accessible, has the ramp and everything so you can get in and out of it without any problem. That was the hundred thousand dollars so it's a total of three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars that we're asking permission to apply for and there's no county match on that. no county match on this one at all motion to approve second okay thank you mm -hmm. all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. thank you you know this evans Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Um, before you this morning is a budget amendment in the amount of $1,537.20. This is to close out a project that we had at Southern High School. Those funds will revert to the lottery fund and be available to be allocated for a future project. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? So um, what was the project? Um, it was for a bathroom partition, if I believe, if I'm correct. It was due to that, and they were doing it at um, all the different high schools, going in and modifying those bathrooms. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Again, unanimous. Thank, Thank you. I think we have no, we don't have any further speakers, is my understanding. Is that correct? Uh, is Gary Garrison here? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, County Manager. Um, I'm, I was going to have uh, Bruce talk about Great Grant or just give an update on the status of that. So, on the 11th hour, uh, the state extended the Great Grant another month. Uh, we also had some good news where one of the uh, applicants reduced their uh, county match ask um, for the same project. I think that somebody asked me, like, why would they do that? I think, again, it's a competitive uh, grant process to the state, but that's a good news for Alamance County um, to reduce the cost that we would have to do for a match. Um, we're waiting on the final MOU on one of the companies. We've already talked to Deborah. We've had a number of meetings to get that final MOU and the map, uh, the uh, letter of support, uh, universal letter of support. So we're almost there. We're just, but that's just an update. I told you I would update you today on that. And so good news across the board. No one's backed out and the price has gone down. So Excellent. You said that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at you. Mm -hmm. It is good news. <laughs> Mr. Brian. We'll take it. <laughs> Anything else? No, sir. All right. Uh, County Commissioner's response or com comments? Moving right along. County Attorney. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at this time, the county attorney asks that the commissioners make a motion to go into closed session pursuant to NC General Statute 143-318.11 under the following sections. Under section A1, to prevent disclosure of information that's privileged or confidential pursuant to the law of the state or the United States or not considered public record. And two, under A, Section 3, to consult with an attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body, which privilege is hereby acknowledged. I do not anticipate any public action will be taken after the closed session. So motion. Moved. Or second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. If I can call you gentlemen oh, now, yes, we'll get out of here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, we've already had a motion to uh, close the session and a second and vote for. Uh, you want to move to go back into open session and then adjourn the meeting? All right. Yeah. So moved. So we're back in open session. Do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.com tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.